Welcome back to Dove Twang. I'm Dave. So we've got a really laid back kind of minor thing here today and we're just going to kind of go slow and, and put it under the microscope a little bit and look at some of our basic skills, a little bit of talk about keys and uh, scales, but mo mostly we're going to go kind of chord by chord and look for nice chord tones that we can land on and kind of hang out on. And um, another reason that I chose this progression and, and kind of set it up this way is to demonstrate this, the situation that often occurs where one scale or kind of key approach doesn't work for a whole progression or a whole song, right? Um, in fact, very often. So um, on those kind of specialized chords, or chords that kind of modulate or go outside of that tonal center that the other chord grouping is in, we need to be able to address those sort of individually, right? And this has happened to everybody, I'm sure. It happens to me all the time. I'm kind of going along and I'm like, yeah, this is working out and I'm just kind of playing right through this song and I'm landing on a lot of good stuff. And then there's that one chord or that one other section or something. It's like, whoa, I'm kind of wiping out here. Like that's not... And I can't finagle my way through that using the same strategy that I'm using for the rest of it. So in those cases, we want to be able to really, you know, do a quick analysis of, all right, well, what chord is that? What are the tones there? And I'm going to make some adjustments when it gets to that, right? And um, you want to really embrace it. You don't want to be scared of those, <laughs> you know, those moments. You want to be confident. You want to really go in there, and that's where you're going to really hit some good buried treasure, and and um, that's kind of a next level thing, right? We, that's where a lot of your really, really nice sounding stuff stands out in your playing. So let's start with this progression. It's B minor, E minor. sharp 7. Okay, so it's a dominant 7th, that F sharp, right? Now, that's the one that's, you know, really colorful. That's kind of just great chord to turn around on back into that B minor. But it doesn't lend itself to that B minor natural scale and a lot of that pentatonic stuff right there. Some of it, it does, but it doesn't quite capture it when you get to that. You want to know, we're, we're going to spend a little time really looking at this one and picking out some of those good notes, right? So let's put this track on for just a second. And um, like I said, we're just going to kind of go with the flow here and stop and talk about things. things I can just show you right away is the B natural minor scale. Same notes as D major. Remember the, um, the relative major and minor thing? So when I say natural minor, you walk that up three doors down. Don't mean to be doing that so fast, but that's just, you know, you can work that out. That's the Do, Re, Mi scale for D. The major scale. Also the same notes as B natural minor. So you take that river of notes and you start and stop on different tones in there. You get different modes and different scales within that same sequence or collection of notes, right? That's a core concept on this channel. So, um, that's going to work out. Really 
really well over those first three chords. And you can kind of do, you know, uh, I, hopefully I did some of this in that intro. It wasn't very long. You can do like some kind of, you know, repetitive themes. Let me see if I can... that last chord. in that B minor pentatonic. There's the root of my B. If I play that same kind of lick and end on that B again over the E minor, it's the fifth of E minor. That sounds cool, right? Let's wait for it to come around. I'll show you what I mean. a little lighter when we got to that uh, F sharp 7, right? Now, bear with me here. So that B minor kind of blues scale, minor pentatonic stuff is going to work great for those first two chords and some, you know, some chord tone stuff, some tri- There's your fifth for the B minor. up that same sequence that we did before. There's the third, root, two, three, four, five. Root, two, three, four, five. Knowing where those first five notes are in that sequence is going to work out great for those first two. Your ear will pick up on that too. It's not just visual memorization. Now, when you get to that A, you you you've got the root of the A right there. Do an A up there, like that C shape of cage. But that third, it's also in that sequence. I like that when it gets to that A, and I did that a couple of times. I'm sorry I hit my mic stand. You might have heard that. Um, I did that a couple of times in that intro. See, we're working our way through this, right? And we're not just kind of putting up flashcards and do this on this one and do this on... You know, we could do that. But, you know, take a little hike through, the, through your progression, right? Stop and look at all the groovy stuff that's out there, right? And you do that by being in, on the path. Right, walking the path, not just looking at it, thinking about it, right? So, both realms are good. This style of this lesson today really emphasizes the uh, experience of it. Um, now, one. 
one little thing here that works, even though we're using the natural minor scale, is picking up and kind of dipping down. <laughs> seventh that's one uh, fret below now it's not going to work hanging out on a lot of these chords but if you're using if you put that in your phrases and your 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 lines and your statements <laughs> just adds a little bit of that gypsy minor sound. You know, you gotta play around with that. There's not really a strict theory about when to do that and when not to and stuff. But if you see me doing that, there's, you can, you can, you know, experiment with that. Uh, along that, with that, you know, do a lot of just straight minor, natural minor. Okay. <laughs> you like, it sounds good. Now, so that got us kind of going through the, the, if we look for a couple of triad shapes, B minor. There's an E minor. Without even moving our hand. There's a, a A major. So just, you know, you know how to look around and, you know, you don't need me to show you ev where every triad in the world is because it just kind of overloads your, doesn't really stick, right? You've got to get out there and, you know, take the other trails off the main trail, <laughs> right? And start investigating that. But that's the idea. So musically speaking, you, you can do it a lot with triads. that last chord right so we got a pretty solid couple of solid ideas there going for the the b minor e minor then the a we get to that uh f sharp seven one thing you can do right away is wherever you are on a three doors down And since you're, since this triad specifically just includes the root third and the fifth, there's no seventh, there's no flat, there's nothing to worry about there, right? So anything that you're doing for A, you can slide it and do the same thing three doors down for the uh, F, uh, F sharp seven. I wanted to say minor, not. So that's the first thing you can do to really make sure that you're going to nail that. Of treasure, I did the I did just the you know what I was suggesting. I just took a triad shape and moved it down, but I snuck that flat seven. 
seven. Remember, this is a dominant seven chord, the F sharp. Okay, so let's say, um, you know, couple recent videos where we've really been hunting down that flat seven for dominant chords. So let's say we, and that A can be a, a dominant chord as well. So let's say we... Some of the real recent videos have been about those kinds of shapes. So that's A. overthink this for you or get you kind of you know thinking of it so abstract the way to look at it is just you know a triad first of all for f sharp major the only thing we're really adjusting there is making sure that we get that major third in there and then that flat seven is just kind of a bonus if you can get that in there somehow and you get a really nice turnaround going into that um back to the top to that to that B minor so here's some ideas going slow some examples of putting all that together I know it sounds like a lot but let me try to demonstrate it simply to get too heady on this one but this is this is a, a a workout in mindful attention to what we're playing right there's not you know we could get this going and we could start putting in more overarching blues licks and patterns and repetitive stuff that would be cool especially if you had a band where this kind of got rocking and, and and you know built up um a little bit as you went but what I was kind of aiming for today, and I hope I helped you with this, was really taking a deep breath and just staying sort of calm and confidently going after those notes and really working that out. When you hit some bad notes, don't worry. Don't, you know, it's not like, ah, you know, this isn't working. Or, you know, it's working. Because your hand and your ear, you're, you're going to correct those. And just go back and, you know, take a break sometimes, you know. Go do something else. Come back to it, you know. Don't, don't push yourself to the point of frustration. But if you, if you do this kind of slow and easy stuff and really kind of keep, try to keep it under the microscope, Later on, when you're rocking on some of your other stuff, those same skills will come out and your accuracy and your ideas will be more sharpened, okay, and your mechanics. Let me know how it goes. Thank you. Talk to you next time.